welcome to a special edition of Brett's Groovy Chainsaws. Brett lost his voice, so it looks like I'll be doing all the talking. You can refer to me as Chris or Chris, Chris Pollard. Yeah. As I'm it's known totally in some voice. circles. I don't know. Go ahead. No, I was good. No, I, I like don't that. fucking care. I like that. Um, it's not like I'm filling in for Fallon. In this video, we're going to talk about Chris Pollock's parts. We're going to talk about parts for his flat top. He's going to talk about the differences and his first ever highly anticipated Evil Dead 2 race top. And in all the race top that's ever been built, I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but it is the most accurate that has ever been produced. And this is the first one. And uh, I'm going to get behind the camera. We're going to go over the details of what he's done. He's going to discuss that. And uh, let's get started. Don't look too cute, I can't. Wait. Is this the thing you guys were looking for? Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no. Alright, let's get started. So Chris, first thing we're gonna talk about, this is for the flat top. This is the top top handle metal in the bracketry. Let's start with the top handle. Um Talk about how the that's rounded, the thickness of the aluminum, things like that. Well, I wish I could remember. I think it's three sixteenths uh, for the aluminum, mm -hmm. or the aluminium for the people across the pond, and and, and other parts of Europe. But um, I forget who I got it from. I'll let Brett know. Um, I get hit a lot in the head, so I'm going to forget a lot of things as as we talk about this. But um, I just pretty much make make a. Uh, an armature with uh, the motor. You can cut it with a hacksaw or a grinder um, or hell, if you have uh, unlimited time, you could even uh, cut through it with a Dremel. Uh, some parts you will, but uh, see if I can get this off so you can actually have a, a closer look at how it's put together. It's the original uh, uh, bell for the clutch. I fill it in and then uh, re-tap it, so that way it has a solid state to go up against. Washer, metal sleeve, and spacer. So, and of course you are gonna have to cut those down, they're not gonna be bought at a standard size. And then, it's just a uh, fender washer, drilled and uh, screwed, bolted, secured. Um, there's metal running through the back. We'll show you that after I throw this back together. And also, you can see right here, the holes are properly spaced and put in correctly for the flat top, the workshed chainsaw. Uh, one thing that I, I did notice is this is uh, a different home light motor piece, but they didn't use motor pieces at all. No, it was just a, a piece of metal that they bent, angled and over, and then had a, a bit of a space to keep the chain from rubbing against the body. So if somebody's doing one, they don't have to be too picky with that. No, I'm just picky because I'm uh, uh, just weird like that. <laughs> But having this threaded helps to keep things in place. Oh, I forgot the washer on the inside, but yeah, that, that won't be a problem. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the correct spacing of the holes for the the muffler cap, because uh, there is a difference between the the race top and the flat top. When you see the build team te uh, scene in the uh, uh, the work shed, it's got the, the race top muffler on it. So it, it, I suppose it really doesn't matter which way you want it just throughout the rest of the film. When you see the, the flat top show up, it's configuration is more like this, especially when he cuts his chainsaw or uh, cuts his, um, what's that thing called? It has two barrels. It shoots things. Thank you. Shotgun. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at the back. Explain the back and why there isn't an extra tab added up here. Well, that's the thing. If you look closely in the film, uh, the way you cut your metal, you have a longer piece and you slit it on each side and you, you bend a tongue up. And it has two screws. And you'll see that during the build scene. The bottom screw is a Phillips. And it's cut flush. The top one that holds the bracket to the clamp, it does extend a little longer. Um, if you look closely, the thickness of uh, the meat of the saw body there's only a certain amount of threads that stick out of the ball tip toggle. And you have to actually purchase that separately. Everybody oh, thinks yeah. it's the original, but it's not. That you'd find on a, a No, home most and hardware store. stores and uh, uh, moreover uh, automotive stores will have it, like an AutoZone or, or anything like that. The actual screw position is a little up and out 
versus the uh, the factory set for how the saws are built. Um, and if you have a little tongue of that left out for a flat top, you can re-drill those and have more more of a secure fit when you, you install it like that. Um, the screw in the front is a, uh, uh, I use a, well, a license plate screw, but th sometimes they're a little too round. You can't find them really flat like you, uh, you could see in uh, elevator screws. So you, I do grind those down and I do chuck them into a uh, drill press and continue to smooth them over so they are more symmetrical. The underside, you can see, this putty here is uh, just JB Weld steel stick. It's got a good bond, it's solvent resistant, so it doesn't matter what paint you use on it, it will take, it will keep, it, it, it's very durable and machinable. And um, unfortunately, because I use that, so you have hand room, the ball tip is not gonna, the toggle switch is not gonna be active. Yeah, because you'll hit your hand on it uh, right away. Um, and this mm. is steel stick. Uh, just the same, uh, I sculpt the handles over a tongue of metal bar. You can see how that's that comes together. You'll see the muffler bracket through here bent in shape, so it has a certain uh, protrusion and kick at an angle. Nice. Let's take a quick look at the front. You can see where on film, Chris pointed this out to me a long time ago, that there was at one point, there was supposed to be a hinge on the front. Yeah, and you can see the holes in the saw body as well. Um, even the, uh, the burn marks from the squib that was taped to the bar, the inside of the bar, for that, uh, the scene where he cuts the, uh, the shotgun, you can see the powder burn around it with a little bit of a, you know, weathering through here. When you watch the film closely and pause and zoom in as best you can, you're gonna notice that these screws aren't super huge. Yeah. And a lot of people like the, the bigger uh, screw look. I'm not a fan, I try to make things as accurate as I can. So we got two grills here. One is for the raised top, one is for the flat top. You can see there's a lot of differences. You wanna embellish a little bit about that, Chris? Sure, there's a, a thickness difference and a uh, overall shape difference. The same amount of fins, just the same, but the wear and tear throughout the film, some of them cracked off, some of them broke. So uh, me being as specific as I can make things, they are sculpted to match screen caps in conjunction with photos from the Bearded Mu Ladies Museum uh, dis you know, display of, of screen use props. So it's kind of reverse engineered from there. A big difference between the pull string handle is it is a one inch uh, and a slightly smaller, I forget the exact measurement off the top of my head, but- It's about seven, eight, something like that, isn't it? I think so. But the, uh, the one inch is just beveled on the ends on each side. The knot pretty much uh, goes similar, but in uh, the race topic build scene, it goes the other way if I remember right. The uh, flat top um, has divots in here that I add with a Dremel, and I make the miscut as that catches the light. When, and you can uh, see that when it's yeah. coming from the back view kind of deal uh -huh. during the work shed scene. Absolutely. That's roughly three inches. You know, center on drill. The flat top versus the uh, the raised top, the way the handle is, uh, because they, parts were interchanged all throughout the film. Um, it is uh, f uh, flathead uh, screws with a flat top, and it is a, a solid like a carriage bolt, but a smaller size than what a lot of people think that was used. Uh, you do see a, a lip edge on there. This one fits very similar. So, and of course you have to have the wood splintering on the back end of the top of the top. So this is the work shed flat top. Uh, wrist clamp, yeah. yes. Um, again, I roll steel. It's not uh, a coffee can, because if you did that with a coffee can, you know it, it'd uh, crush in. But uh, I roll steel for the grooves. Um, there are three contact points of brackets that secure it to the back of the saw body. One, of course, is curved, fitting flush fit. You gotta crush in a certain bend on the end to make sure it sucks up proper. Mm -hmm. The other one actually has a twist to it. That's on the bottom. On the bottom, and it sits at a bit of an angular kick. And then this one is for the, on the top. On the top, but again, it's the straight bolt. And of course, I make the aircraft fastening nut and thread it, and of course, drill the two holes in it. And of course the trunnion uh, is much smaller 
Then you find on standard ones, you just buy off a shelf because again, I cannibalize two different clamps to make one. I make a new tongue. It's braised with silver solder to hold in place. So you have more contact instead of just one screw holding in so it doesn't turn and flop around on you. All right, uh, the bar for the flat top, you'll see during the build scene, it's the raised top bar turned upside down with the chain glued on it. But um, when it's in operation, uh, you know, when he, uh, after, when, when he cuts his shotgun, you're gonna see that it does have a round nose. Uh, it's an Oregon bar um, that I removed the, uh, the, the nose rivets and filled in with weld. Um, Cause you'll see that it's round when he does cut his shotgun at, uh, at the end of the build scene. Plus, if you come down here, you'll see that I have a stopper in here cause I still use uh, pieces of the original motor which has a set screw to suck up the tension on the chain. With that, it's gonna stop it up there rather than way up here because you do see a little bit of the slot in the end of that scene. And you've cannibalized a chain to make the right kickback chain. That's the thing. If you look close at the actual uh, teeth on the chain, it has these fins on it on both saws in Evil Dead 2 and in Army of Darkness. And we'll get into that more with the race top, but uh, I could only find them in 18 inch lengths. So I had to pretty much splice two chains together to make up the, the difference. All right, we're gonna talk about the raised top from Evil Dead 2 that Chris Pollock did. All right, first off, the top handle actually has nuts on the side. These are just finger tight right now, so they're a little loose. But again, uh, they're solid by carriage bolts, nuts on the underside. If you look at how the aluminum's cut, um, it's not round. It does have uh, an angular kick to it. It was really thrown together the way Sonny Berman's crew and Sonny did them. Um, it is a welded top. Uh, I did my best to put every little detail in, including a miscut that you really see a, a pretty good shot of when uh, in the cellar when a saw hits the ground and stalls out. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that the back end is flat. Everyone seems to make it round. Again, same way I make the clamp, only difference is there's a different hole in the bottom and the, that you can see up from the inside. And that doesn't go to any brackets. It did go to a certain bracket that only appears once when he stabs Henrietta in the back. Right, let's go to the side here. Because you had to do some modifications to the starter cover. Absolutely. Uh, there, whatever internal workings uh, are original in, in, uh, during production, something is actually pulling this area downwards. So using a heat gun, cold water, and a pair of gloves or tongs so you don't mar the plastic, you do have to heat it up. And I do bend it, and then I quench it like you would if you forged metal. So that's, that's right there. That is right there. And if you look, the way the, uh, the front cap sits, it's kind of misthreaded the way it slides in, which helps keep that end lower and this end higher. Uh, the side handle is much like the, uh, the flat top. It's cut flat and then it has a bevel to it. And because it's sitting at a slight angle, there's more of a bevel on top than the bottom. Uh, you can see that in quite a few screen caps. Again, you have the side screw and the bracketry that you saw on the, uh, the flat top made very similar. So that way you have a contact point on the top and the bottom. And we'll show you how I make a clamp holding the bottom piece in. Um, this side, again, you have your cover. And I make those because you'll never find one that's not trashed. Uh, we do have two tons of metal sticking up. And if you look up inside the bottom, I don't know if there's enough light in there for you to see it. I don't know why, but that thing just stops dead. It looks like it's attached to nothing at all. Um, there is a side bracket that holds, it, it bends the back end of the chainsaw down. It sits out so far. Um, and you'll see these holes in Army of Darkness since uh, I'm pretty sure everyone knows by now that the saws were reused for Army of Darkness after a slight retooling. And another thing some people are probably going to ask is the muffler. Why, it's, why we're not using the other side? Oh, well, because both sides appear in the film. With Very the raised top. On the raised top. But there is a different configuration with the holes. And that is the one that actually has these solder marks in it. And of course I grind those in and shape them with the Dremel and then I brace them with silver solder. Then I re-blue 
I used gun bluing to, to refinish the caps and a, uh, a, a metal wax to seal it to help keep it from rusting. And this is a bandit body. It is. Uh, you can clearly see that this is present. You see it in Army of Darkness. And you can see that bracket in Army of Darkness, too. You can see the holes in the bottom as well, all throughout. Yes. Um, again, we have these two screws here. You'll know why they're there. They match uh, with what you see on camera and on screen. Uh, but I, I uh, turn them into a practical purpose instead of holding a plate to spin the chain or hold the motor. This is how you can tell it's the proper bandit that you got this dip and that that body line stops before the dip. Oh, yeah, the, absolutely. The bandit that I took apart for that video had... You know, it was further out, about halfway in it. So mm -hmm. the halfway in it one's wrong. This one's right. And Chris, God bless him. He uh, <laughs> he's like Brett. I'm bringing a body with it because it's modified and changed around. So uh, and I'll show you real quick. You want to twist that around so I can see the bottom half. Sure. And then we'll get to the clamp. You can see how this is pushed out. Again, just like the starter cover, how it's heated and quenched. I heat it, bend that tab down because there is a seam where the saw is swinging in the air, and you do see that it's not split yet. Throughout Later on in the film, they did split that side. I didn't put the, uh, the two holes and screws here and here, uh, or the toggle switch here that we'll talk about later. Brett will get into that. Yeah, because this was here. Mm -hmm. This was done at your shop. Yeah, and uh, uh, Brett said, no problem, we could finish it off. <laughs> I said, well, yeah. fine by me. Uh, let's talk about the clamp or the back half that you wanted to talk about. Sir? There are two contact points for the clamp. Obviously the side and obviously the top. Um, and you can see that the top is warped and stuff, but they didn't really, you know, they didn't do a fine finish. At all. If you look close at the way the metal sits, it's not sitting level and, and square on each side. It does have a kick to it. And I did take a hammer and pound the front down so it does have that concaved look in the front. And you can really see that when ash hits the ground in the cellar. Uh-huh. Well, this bracket was a pain in the ass to make, <laughs> as all of them were. And it's different from the flat top. It is completely different because it is a tongue of metal, and it's thicker than a lot of people believe it to be, which makes it really hard to make that little bit of a curve that comes up before that sharp angle. And I do believe I made about five of them before I actually hit it correctly without marring the metal. It is sitting in the lower end, and you do see the hole and the countersink in screen caps. Yes, you do. Uh, not only that, um, all the parts were interchanged from the flat and the race all throughout Evil Dead 2. Um, the, uh, uh, the grills, of course, uh, those were glued to the starter cover, so those didn't change very much. But the top handle did end up from one to the other for certain scenes. So, this bar here, I don't know why the uh, the brand name is escaping me, but... Uh, I think it's Craftsman? Uh, yeah, and the Oregon replacement you have to look out for because they do have that hole located uh, uh, a little closer than uh, the original scene in, in Evil Dead 2. Uh, again, during the, the build scene for the flat top, it's turned upside down and the chain is glued on when he shoves it in. But it's just a brief scene, super quick. They are not an absolute true measurement of a 20-inch exposure from the motor out so but it, that is still considered 20 inch bar but it's it, not an exact it is. uh the standards changed over time is what i'm imagining again i had to uh take uh two chains and expand one completely not easy to do especially if you don't have the tools necessary to do it to replace the rivets there is no exposure of the groove like on the flat top so, much like the flat top, I did have to fill in with a little bit of weld so it sits proper where it should. Whereas the flat top, the stopper that I made is a tongue of metal that I welded in. You're good. <laughs> All right. Very similar armature for the way how I do the flat tops. You'll see this weird thin plate of metal right here where the two screws bolt together. Because I make these. Because I only use the, uh, the screws uh, to match the way uh, the saw appears on camera, the factory holes did not have screws in them. So I basically cut and made a clamp system for the bottom, and there is a that top screw. If you look up and in there, 
I don't know if you could see it. Mm, it's really. it's very similar to the way how I did the flat top with this bracket here. So that way, you drill your top hole, it connects here, as well as the clamp system on the bottom. So everything with the bar of metal here, as well as this bar of metal in here, if you could get an angle in that, everything bolts, the bar bolts to this on the outside. So everything else kind of bolts around it. So the main weight of the bar is supported by the handle which is connected to and that steel stick too. You put a vertical handle in this. Oh yeah, the way I sculpted this fits like that. Yeah. Nice. So, and if you look where your wrist ends, because he does bend his wrist when he has this, it's not way up his forearm. The only reason it looks like that in Army of Darkness is because it's a different clamp and this is shorter. And what gauge of metal is your top? Uh, I'm, I think it's 16. It's pretty thick. If you look at the gauge of it, of course, everything is welded in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not easy to, to cut, bend, and drill, especially the bends. Now, like I said before, uh, Brett's going to finish off certain details. This is just a raw build because he did say he was going to use his saw body. So I left it up to him where, where you have to drill here and towards the back, right about here-ish. And you can really see that bend in this view. So there's a screw here and a screw with a washer up here to hold, uh, fill a square cutout hole. Um, those details you can see when the, the tree crashes through the door and uh, grabs, grabs ash before he sticks it in its eye. Also, the toggle. Toggle, of course, is a long post. It does have so many threads sticking out, just like on top of the flat top. Again, steel stick, I love it. This is a solvent resistant plastic that you can sand and buff and polish. So, because it's solvent resistant, it's really hard to get paints and certain things to stick to it. Steel stick, this formula of it is solvent resistant, just the same, and it does bond really well to it if you have any deep gouges or scratches. And also the toggle switch goes in the bottom over here, correct? That's exactly where I'd put it if you want it to look like what it did in the film. Well, it's been a fun week. Chris it's been Pollock. an amazing week, are you kidding? Chris Pollock and Cora have been here. Everyone was here. We had Roger, Roger Doug, and Holly, Doug, Holly uh, Paul. He's sleeping over there. Yeah, now one thing about Paul is I get a lot of people hitting me up about uh, the... Um, the, these things here. Um, the grills. They are. I almost forgot the English word for them. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Paul, if, you, uh, if, if you're anywhere in the UK, he'll, you'll be able to get them from him, either, either version. Uh, that's pretty much as soon as I get back. Let's give it a little close up of them real quick. So, there you go. You have now seen the best Evil Dead 2 parts. The best Evil Dead 2 builder in the world. Well, I try. You try. <laughs> and you nail it every time. And I hope this helped you guys out. So, if you're building Evil Dead 2, uh, it gives you guys some inspiration, some direction to go. And if you're halfway done with your build, please don't be mad at us. And go, gosh, damn it, I gotta start over. Um, it's all up to perception, what you like. Yeah. But here we're trying to tell you what's correct. Well, that's, that's my bag. Um, Al, uh, on the KOS page, um, he, he always tells, uh, says that both Brett and I have this disease. This disease of trying to make things as perfect as they can be. Yep, it's called the rabbit hole. Yeah, and it doesn't always mean uh, it's right angles and proper bends because if you really study these saws, they were just thrown together. Yes. All right. Well, it's been fun, and I've been so excited about getting to this, and I've been telling a lot of people about it. It's just amazing work by an amazing artist, Chris Balk. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You love it. You know that. All right. Until next time, guys. You stay groovy. All right. Kiss already. No. <laughs>